you need to know that God loves you. Get ready, today's show is going to bring you hope. Hello and welcome to the Strong Tower Mental Health Podcast. I am your host, Heidi Mortensen, licensed marriage and family therapist. I am so excited today to talk about heavenly alignment of our emotions. We can feel so hijacked when our emotions take over and we're wondering like, I'm a Christian, why am I struggling so much? And today, as I'm talking about these emotions, my prayer is that you will actually step back into that place the way that God designed you to be because we are made in his image. So let's pray. Holy Spirit, I pray, God, that you be with every single one of the listeners right now. Guide them as their ears hear this or are watching this, Lord. And I pray for heavenly alignment of their emotions that anything that is triggering, Lord, that you make a note that they will be able to go back and get that healed, that you will heal them, Holy Spirit. I bind up all influence of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. And I say all of you devils, all of you liars need to get out of their life right now in the name of Jesus. All familiar spirits that keep coming back, even when they try to get healthy, you need to leave. And I just pray protection, and wisdom and revelation over each one of them. They will continue to keep moving closer and closer to you, God. Guide me as I speak in this podcast, Lord. I pray that I speak only what it is that you need me to speak. Nothing more, nothing less. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Well, if you are regular, please make sure to like, subscribe, comment. Um, really, we want to make sure that you're a part of this. Check out my website um, and please make sure to let me know what it is that you want to hear um, or ask any questions that you have. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram. Um, so I love making short little videos and reels of things that I feel like God is showing me. Um, and last week, I, ha I had on Jennifer Evaz, and she is a very powerful minister, deliverance, author. Um, she really has a powerful testimony. And I'd really encourage you, if you haven't listened to it, to make sure to go back and listen to it. Make sure to get her book. Um, very educational. And she really talks about mental health, inner healing, and deliverance, which is really what I'm trying to get after. I want more counselors to be cross-trained. I want more clients to understand, oh, what's inner healing? Oh, I can do that. And being able to find the right biblical mental health counselor um, that operates in all of this, you know, that they're cross-trained and that we can can kind of bridge the gap between church and mental health um, and really kind of take on the kingdom of God so that we're healed and we don't have so many of our bondages that we have because I feel like there's so much of us that are in the church are in bondage. Um, and the thing about deliverance is that it's not for the unsaved. Deliverance is for us Christians. Jesus literally said, cast out demons like he told us that it's one of the one of the things that he told us to do in the great commission it's not something that we can wonder about and so even as you're listening to this and you hear lies that are coming up just know that that's just the enemy trying to take over and say no okay so just tell those voices to just be quiet and allow holy spirit to guide so one of the things that i want to say about when we talk about emotions is that it's okay to be a mess. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to have whatever feeling you're feeling. We cannot help what we are feeling. Feelings just show up. Emotions just show up. But what we can do is we can get in the word, get our mind transformed so that God can renew us so that the thoughts that we have bring in more godly emotions. And so there's the cognitive triangle, which is our thoughts emotions, behaviors, thoughts, emotions, behaviors. And if our thoughts aren't lined up with the word of God, if we're very much in the world, 
our feelings are going to be hijacked to what's in the world and what we're actually thinking about. And then our behaviors are going to map those feelings. And then that's going to go to the next thought. And so we need to be in the word. We need to be in prayer. We need to be in this place with the Holy Spirit so that God is the one who's transforming us. So that's that's one of the most powerful ways for us to be able to align ourselves with heavenly emotions. Um, and so I want to read um, Colossians 3, 2 through 3. It says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ. So when we are saved, we're no longer controlled by our flesh. But then why do we feel like that? Okay, this is where I've talked about the soul. Our souls, our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we just say to our soul, no, you get below my spirit. Okay, I am saved. I'm made in the image of God. And so we just say that to our soul. Okay, our spirit man is made perfect when we are saved. Our, we're hidden in Christ. Our mind isn't on the earthly things. And so what happens is we keep becoming sanctified as we read the word, as we worship, we listen to different podcasts and YouTube videos where we're really being encouraged. All the old man, the soul is getting healed. Okay, and so sometimes we've gotten hijacked from experiences we have had, from trauma that we've experienced, where our emotions aren't aligned with what God wants. And I'm going to take something from a man named Jack Panksept, and his name is spelled J-A-A-K. His last name is P-A-N-K-S-E-P-P. And he did a lot of research on the circuits of emotions and motivation, kind of why do we do the things that we do? And he talked about that there are seven basic emotional systems. There's seeking, mating, care, and play, which are rewarding. And then there's rage, fear, and panic, which are punishing. And again, I could take this from many different places. I know that there are some people that say that there's eight basic emotions, which which are anger, disgust, sadness, surprise, fear, anticipation, joy, and trust. And so the reason why I'm wanting to talk about Jack Pinksepp's circuits of emotion is that when I got trained in pre-verbal EMDR, okay, if anybody knows that's a trauma technique, they taught us how to actually do EMDR with trauma that you had from before you were born, when you were in the womb, and when you were a baby. And they taught us that as a baby, you literally are born with all the circuits in your brain working the way that they're meant to be, okay? So all these circuits, these emotional circuits that I'm talking about, and it's like driving a car. If you need to go feel anger, you go into the garage and you grab anger, which is an emotion, and you drive it. You feel it. I'm feeling angry because there was an injustice that happened. It just is. It's not good or bad. It just is. We often will think, oh, that's not okay. I can't feel that. And, and when we do that, then that car that we're driving then goes into the yard. And then the next emotion comes up. I'm feeling jealous. And we drive jealousy. We take that out of the car. And then we're like, ah, oh, this doesn't feel good either. Whoop, now that goes in the yard. And now we continue to have build these this junkyard of cars of emotions that are not being properly felt. But see, Jesus says in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28, that come to me, all who are heavy laden and burdened. Jesus wants us to go to him. It's okay to not be okay. Again, we're not going to stay there. We're not going to stay in that place of burden because when you bring it to Jesus, he will actually hear you. He will comfort you. And you will move through to the emotions that you need to move through. So when we do go to the parking garage, grab anger, grab sadness, whatever it is, and we feel it and we give ourselves permission to feel it. I'll do this with my clients. I'll say, it's okay to feel angry. I'm right here with you in your anger. I'm not judging it. I'm not analyzing it. I'm not trying to make you change. I'm not trying to fix it. I'm even honoring that you're feeling this emotion. And I just sit there with my clients. I just sit there with them in their emotions. I'm seeing them. Okay, this is what God wants us. God wants us to be seen and known. God wants to be seen and known. And so you're being seen and you're being known. When you take that time, you feel your feelings. You don't push them away. And then after you give yourself permission to feel those feelings, they shift. When I give my clients permission to just sit and notice anger, 
they'll move into a different emotion. All of a sudden they're like, oh, I'm not feeling angry anymore. I'm actually feeling confused. And then they move into something else. And then once they sit in confusion, then they move to maybe, maybe like, 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 for, like they need to forgive or, you know, again, every, everybody's different, but they'll move maybe into um, kind of wondering or curiosity of what, what else was going on in that situation that they were feeling angry about. And so when we allow ourselves to feel what we need to feel, we move through the progression of processing and we don't stay stuck in that negative emotion. So just like the car, we go back, we got to feel the feelings, give ourselves permission. Once you do that, it goes back into the garage and anger goes back in there. It's not good or bad, it just is. It's like, it's neutral. It's, it, they're, they're emotions that we just need to feel. They're going to happen sometimes and it doesn't need to hijack our life or take over. We don't need to have a, I don't want you to have a junkyard of emotions all over your yard. So if we go through these seven basic emotional systems that I talked to you about, as I'm, as I'm saying them, what I pray is that God steps in and heals any broken alignment that happened in your past, whether it was a long time ago or recently, and that he's aligning you the way that God designs, that we're going back to birth. So the first one is seeking. This is our system's feeling of enthusiasm, anticipation, desire, curiosity. So if you've lost this, if you've been wounded by this, we just pray for God to heal that circuit. So we just pray for healing of the seeking circuit. So enthusiasm can grow, desire, curiosity for you to dream again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The next one is the rage system, which is feeling very, very angry, frustrated. Your body might kind of show some irritation, heartbeat increase, maybe even restraint, holding up walls, indignation with other people. And so we just pray for healing with that system to come to alignment with heaven. The next one is fear. This one is connected to anxiety. It's connected to pain. It's connected to threat. So we just pray for God to just come in and heal this circuit back to the way that he designed. That he knew you in your mother's womb. That when it's proper for us to feel fear, we'll be able to go to the garage, feel the feeling, do what we need to do with it if we're protecting someone, if we're protecting something, that God will come in and he will guide us as that emotional circuit is working the way that it needs to work. But here's when it gets hijacked. Let's say you were experiencing trauma as a child and now your spouse is asking you a question like, hey, did you take out the garbage? Or, hey, did you call the doctor for that thing? And you immediately get triggered and go into a flight fight response and attack your spouse because you're going into a trauma reaction of childhood that has nothing to do with your spouse. So this is where those alignments can get off. And so I just pray for God to come and heal that alignment so that you can properly feel the feelings, the emotional circuits the way that they're intended to. Okay, the next one is Care. Care system is tender and loving. This is where we're nurtured. Okay, if you didn't have a nurturing upbringing, I just pray for the Holy Spirit to come and nurture you. God is our Father. God can be our mother. He just allow Him to comfort you. And this is why there's the Trinity. There's Father God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So I just want you to feel every single part. the Godhead coming in and comforting you of the Trinity, whatever language you use, that you can receive that love so you can give it away. The next one is panic. This is where we actually feel lonely and sad. So if you've had some separation distress, 
social loss, if there's been grief, this can lead to depression. So we just pray for healing right now and proper heavenly alignment of this system. The next one is play. And this is when we feel joy. God says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we just pray for heavenly alignment right now, healing over that system where you're focused too much on religion or too much on I have to do these things or striving. God says we don't need to strive. He died on the cross for us. We believe by the grace of God. We don't need to try or strive so we can let loose and we can play. We can be little kids in the kingdom. And so if any of you or if you know anyone who has taken medication for depression or anxiety, uh, what happens is it brings a relief. There's this medication will actually bring relief into your brain. And what happens when we are attaching to someone and we're kind of properly aligned with our emotions and we attach, there's opioids that actually are released. So it's the same thing that happens with the drug that happens when we properly attach. If you did not have proper attachment with your childhood, it's very hard for you to attach with God. So this is why I'm praying for this heavenly alignment so that as you're being properly aligned with the circuits of your emotions in your brain, I pray right now for you to attach to God. That you can attach to Father God. That you can attach to Holy Spirit. That you can attach to Jesus. Human relationships, they're the best antidepressants. But if we can't attach to God, we're going to struggle to attach to people. But which came first, the chicken or the egg? Did you have a tough upbringing and you didn't have that attachment? Okay. God can break any hurt attachments that you had. And so I pray right now for God to come in and crash into any broken attachments that you had and for him to heal those, for you to forgive who you need to forgive and that you attach to God. And then as you attach to God, you will be able to attach to your spouse, to your friends, to your family, your parents, your children, any place where you've just been oh like resisting and whatever one of these circuits was broke broke felt kind of broken of your emotions that you're going to be able to see yourself now attaching to other people that there's proper attachment and as there's proper attachment then there's proper thinking there's proper feeling there's proper behavior and so it's just the cycle that happens but we need to get the holy spirit in here we need holy spirit to get in <laughs> get into our soul so our soul can get healed. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your presence right now. We thank you, Lord, for the healing that's happening in our brain. That you can rewire our brain, God. So I'm just going to speak Philippians 4, 4 through 8 over you right now. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And this is just you being vulnerable and real with your father, with your Abba father, with your daddy, with God, whatever language you need to use. Because in the peace of God, which transcends all our understanding, so our brain doesn't get it, it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So as you're being guarded by the Holy Spirit, by God, from that, the next verse comes out, which is finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So your brain will be thinking about whatever is noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, and heavenly. 
So right now, your mind is being properly aligned to heaven. You are thinking on things that are of heaven, not on earthly things. Remember, you died and your life is hidden in Christ. And so I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the healing that is happening right now. And I pray, God, that after they listen to this podcast, Lord, that Holy Spirit, you are with them and you are highlighting to them any other thing that needs to get brought into the light and that you will quicken them to have ears to hear what it is that you're showing them to just bring it to you to get healed. So we thank you, Lord, that we have heavenly alignment with our emotions. We give you all the glory, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.